Peters. We are glad to have you alongside and uh, to have you here in the midst of uh, of the great Easter tide, the great 50 days of Easter. Uh, we are in second Easter right now. It's Thursday. We are remembering George Augustus Selwyn, uh, truly a remarkable figure of the 19th century missional expansion of Anglicanism. We're going to talk a little bit about that and a little bit about him in a second. But first, I'd like to ask you to like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and give us a follow on Facebook if you are watching. And in all things, know that it's a great privilege and a blessing to welcome you here. If you have any intercessions, prayers, or concerns and thanksgivings, please don't be mm -hmm. afraid to put those in the live chat or in the comments and remarks. We monitor those and make sure we respond to them promptly. And of course, we're always lifting y'all, all y'all up in prayer. So we're remembering George Augustus Selwyn. He was a remarkable figure of the 19th century. And uh, he was in his uh, ecclesiastical career, if you will, first the Metropolitan of New Zealand, later Archbishop, and then he became the Bishop of Lichfield when he returned to England after his missional time ended there. But it's important to hold him up and sort of be a little bit acerbic towards the missional consciousness of the 19th century Anglicans. They tended to follow in and uh, align themselves with the exporting of a colonial mentality. So uh, for all the good that he did, we also must recognize that uh, most of his work and the work of other missional agents, and particularly in the Pacific Rim in those days, was really an impositional Christianity. And uh, with the opportunity to participate in the life of Christ came the responsibility and often the burden of being a part of a Western European mindset in a Pacific uh, region, uh, Polynesian and uh, Melanesian and island, island culture that was much more ancient and in some ways richer than the one that was being imported. He was a rugged individual of the evangelical persuasion. He grew up uh, in the upper middle class and uh, was sent to public school, which was private school in England in those days, attending a rather prestigious grammar school with rather prestigious tutors, then went to Eton and on to, oh, Lord, help me. I can't remember whether there's Oxford or Cambridge. Do you remember? Uh, no. But... During that time, he excelled at athletics and in studies and classics. So um, he was a man's man in those days and actually participated in the very first uh, boat race, uh, the rowers between Oxford and Cambridge, which is a long standing tradition. Um, and, uh, and, and even the, the race is an annual rivalry to this day. Uh, he was a rugged athlete, an apt learner, and an avid consumer of any opportunity to absorb knowledge and uh, an opportunity to learn a new skill. That is enhanced by the fact that when he received his commission to go to a, a mission in New Zealand, on his way, he not only learned Maori, not only to be able to converse, but also to preach when he arrived and to be uh, able to blend in with Maori culture. He also became a rated able seaman on a bark, a brig, and a sloop because as he was sailing from England to New Zealand, of course, he had to disembark a couple of times and was so impatient to reach his destination that he left the bark that he was on, uh, so signed on to a brig and uh, basically helped them sail it. And then eventually had to forsake that for a sloop in order to get all the way to New Zealand. What a guy. Laura, do you want to add anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> We, we have to acknowledge that that he truly was able to do a great deal for the Anglican Church in New Zealand. And to be honest, um, we reap the benefits of the of the church in New Zealand in some significant ways. Um, their their work, particularly in their latest book of common prayer, has been literally a banner for multicultural and multilingual Anglican expression and uh, is really even forming us here at St. Peter's. We actually use the New Zealand prayer book on Wednesdays at noon for our, our Eucharistic worship. And uh, we often make use of the prayers and also some of the liturgies, pastoral liturgies 
um, here at St. Peter's. We use the night prayer regularly from the daily office, and we also um, have used the dedication of a marker, which in Maori culture, the one year anniversary of someone's passing is uh, is one in which uh, usually a monument is uh, consecrated in their name, and we use that for the blessing of graves here at St. Peter's. So we remember today George Augustus Selwyn, and we're ready for morning prayer. Here we go. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord, alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. The first half of Psalm 18. Please join with me. I love you, O Lord, God, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me. The cords of shale entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because God was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils. And devouring. Devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. God bowed down the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under the Lord's feet. He rose on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. God made darkness the Lord's covering all around. God's, can God's canopy thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, there broke through his clouds hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, the Most High uttered voice. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. God delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. 
They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. God delivered me because the Lord de de delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I've heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who had gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry, angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, as much as each needed, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is Song of Wisdom, together. Wisdom freed from a nation of oppressors, a holy people, and a blameless race. She entered the soul of a servant of the Lord, withstood dread rulers with wonders and signs. To the saints she gave the reward of their labors, and led them by a marvelous way. She was their shelter by day and a blaze of stars by night. She brought them across the Red Sea. She led them through mighty waters, but their enemies she swallowed in the waves and spewed them out from the depths of the abyss. And then, Lord, the righteous sang hymns to your name and praised with one voice your protecting hand. For wisdom opened the mouths of the mute and gave speech to the tongues of a newborn people. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wave war, wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor as supreme or of governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God, Live as free people, yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all deference, not only those who are kind and gentle, but also those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example 
so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is Song of True Motherhood. Together. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed, and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, whose servant George Augustus Selwyn laid a firm foundation for the growth of your church in many nations, raise up in this and every land evangelists and heralds of your kingdom that your church may proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace, which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I welcome your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Prayers this morning for students everywhere, especially those that are in college and also in higher degrees. We ask that you open their hearts and minds to the new ideas that they are being exposed to and that you give them the courage to 
try out to work with their new information to make the mistakes they need to mistake need to make now so that they will continue to learn and go into the world with confidence and wisdom. Amen. Amen. Pray for Isabella, who is charting a course of treatment and recovery for her family who watches over her. Pray for Buddy and his recovery from surgery. Pray for the students and community of the Islamic Student Center in Red Rutgers in New Brunswick, and for the religious communities that are supporting them after the desecration and vandalism of their center. And we remember all Muslim communities as they mark Eid al-Fitr and <laughs> keep a celebration at the end of their fast of Ramadan. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of San Diego, the Episcopal Church. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Reparations Commission. In the general thanksgiving, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We appreciate your presence. We uh, will see you soon. I have uh, a social engagement this evening, so we will not be able to do evening prayer, but uh, we will uh, be gathering again for morning prayer on Monday. And of course, we have Sunday worship. Hope to see you soon. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up and we will see you soon. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.